Family-owned Gig Harbor Brewing has been making delicious, easy-drinking beers since 2015. Come by one of our tap rooms, the Harbor Tap Room along the waterfront in Gig Harbor, or our Tacoma Tap Room and Brewery on South Tacoma Way in Tacoma. Visit the tap rooms, mention the code word GIGLY, and we'll take a dollar off your first pint. For the most up-to-date tap room info, please Google Gig Harbor Brewing or find us on Facebook and Instagram. This is Gig Harbor Brewing founder John Fosberg, and I'll see you in the tap rooms. I remember that time when we had a last fight. Words were said out of line. They were your words, not mine. Do you ever look back and think about all the things you could have said? Replay them over again inside your head. This is the Revisionary Podcast. Stories of all we would have done in the past. This is the Revisionary Podcast with your host, Juan Carlos. The Revisionary Podcast. Have you ever experienced anything difficult and not felt like you had an outlet? I'm Haley Crow, the host of Facilitating Voices, an outlet podcast where we discuss complex topics surrounding mental health, social justice issues, and interview people with real and raw experiences and exposures to trauma. Tune in to learn, grow, and realize you're not alone. New episodes released weekly on the Chatter Network. This is the Revisionary Podcast. Stories of all we would have done in the past. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Revisionary Podcast. And I am back. Yes, it is me, Juan Carlos. I, uh... I hope some of you guys missed me, or maybe you didn't. I don't know. Maybe you guys want Phil back. I, I don't know what to tell you. But I'm back. I'm here. And uh, this is the first episode that we're doing in our second year of the podcast. This is this is kind of cool. So I'm really excited for that. That's that's kind of cool. Um, This week, we have uh, Sonia Vai joining us. And uh, I actually have... She's one of those people who, for whatever reason, we haven't crossed paths despite both doing comedy in New York. So I'm actually excited to uh, get to know her, see what she's like, and uh, you know, just get a feel for uh, who she is as a person. So why don't we go ahead and see if we can get her on the line? Hello, Sonia. How are you? Hi. So great to be here, Juan Carlos. Oh, no. <laughs> pleasure's all mine. Thank you for coming on the Revisionary Podcast. I'm excited. Are you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I like. I really. I thought hard about which story I wanted to tell, and I'm. I'm very excited to tell the story. All right. No, look, I'm excited to have you on. It, it's always for me. So one of my favorite things about doing this podcast is that I've had the opportunity to meet so many new people, and like, I like. I've, I've been hearing so much about you lately that I was just looking forward to finally being able to sit down and uh, tell the story with you or hear the story. Ah, oh, stop. <laughs> Go on, stop. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. So what have you been up to lately? Well, today I spend the entire day in bed because I felt very depressed about life. Um, and I do get that way. I get to be some, I, I get to be hopeless sometimes because uh, I do suffer from depression and some days are worse than others. But besides my mental issues, um, I'm doing okay. I, uh, I've been doing a lot of comedy. I've been doing either Zoom or live shows almost every night. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so... The, uh, tell me more about uh, your creative projects that you've been, you know, doing. Like, how'd you get into okay. comedy and all so, that? So, uh, in addition to doing a lot of uh, Zoom shows and live shows, just to keep the muscle alive, because I know it doesn't really count right now, um, I wrote a pilot. Oh, wow. Yeah, I wrote a pilot, and I am about to finish my second draft. And uh, I'm... I'm I don't know. I've never worked so hard, I think, on, on one particular piece. And it's sure. so weird, too, because you're like, it's only one episode, mm -hmm. right? But uh, I guess in some ways it's the most important one. And I, I'd like to submit it probably I'll be done by uh, the end of the month. So I'd like to submit it to, you know, programs and, and festivals and things like that in, in January. Um, mm -hmm. but I've been writing a lot aside from that as well. I've been writing comedy. Um, I was surprised at how much material I thought I'd have no material, sure. but, uh, I have a lot of material and I thought I have no material cause I feel like every day is a blur and I feel like I do very little every day. I feel <laughs> completely unproductive. Right. Um, 
but then I looked back and I was like, oh, I did do, I did do some things, you know, <laughs> I did accomplish things. Uh, so that's, that's basically where I've been spending a lot of my time. Um, also watching content, you know, I've, I've been just devouring Netflix as I'm sure everyone else has. Of course. And I've been trying to, I guess, um, develop better relationships with some people like it's just kind of happened i guess i don't know if i've tried to just happen i I just feel like i've become closer to people and i've and i've spoken to them way more than i did when Mm -hmm. before pandemic so that's been interesting uh an interesting thing yeah okay i think uh i'm convinced that uh netflix might have uh planned this pandemic um (laughs) because i feel like their stock price has gone up exponentially ever since then it's like oh (laughs) <laughs> How do we get people to stay home and just consume our entire library? Hmm. I, think, I know. Yeah, I think that's one conspiracy I can get behind. I think <laughs> there's something there, Juan Carlos. It wasn't just Netflix, too. It was like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. They were like, what can we do? You know, let's plan this. Um, I should inform you that uh, not at all because they sponsor my product and carry all of my podcasts. I must say that Amazon is the greatest company that has ever existed. <laughs> Um, they have done absolutely nothing wrong. And I love everything that Amazon does. Please, Amazon, keep my podcast on your screen sites. <laughs> Talk about product placement. <laughs> for all of your daily needs, please reach out to Amazon Prime. You know, for a nice price of $100, they'll have it there in two days or less. <laughs> oh, gosh. Then I, I don't want to tell you my feelings on Amazon. We should move on. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Again, I'd like to keep my podcast streaming where they are, so I am contractually obliged. <laughs> please, please don't let Juan Carlos lose his podcast because of Sonia Vi. That's, that's see, I just get people into trouble. This is what I, first of all, I've been doing this a lot too, and I, I've done this even pre-pandemic. This is I'm just not a good, not a good influence. <laughs> <laughs> Also, uh, Netflix, if you uh, if you want me to stop insulting you too, you can start cutting them checks. You know, my routing number is available. You know, with that one, I'm going to chime in too. Yeah, Netflix, I'm free too. I'm free <laughs> to take your money. Okay. <laughs> right? I'm happy, I'm happy to sell you my pilot. Let's do this. Let's make it. <laughs> Let's get it on. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Sonia, the stage is yours. Please go ahead and tell us your story. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Okay, it's, uh, it happened when I was 17 years old. I was not. I was not a kid who drank or took drugs, you know, in in high school. I was pretty nerdy. And um, it was like this, I think the probably a couple months before I graduated uh, high school, I was with two of my friends and we decided to go have drinks. So I stole some liquor from my parents' liquor cabinet, (laughs) which was like in in their closet because they don't even drink anymore. So the liquor I stole was probably like 20 years old. (laughs) It was already bad liquor and it was whiskey, something like that. I think it was Jack Daniels, Black Label. Like I didn't know what I was doing, okay? I had no idea. And my, me and my two friends were like literally walking around and we have it in a paper bag. Yeah. Because we're idiots, you know? <laughs> and we, we clearly don't even look old enough to be doing it. And we're just taking swigs of this Johnny <laughs> or whatever, Jack Daniels or Johnny So you're Walker. like, you're literally culturally appropriating hobo culture is what you're telling me. Yes. <laughs> yes, we were. Unabashedly. <laughs> absolutely. And of course, like a police officer spots us and he, and he kind of uh, waves us over. And my first instinct is to run away. Oh, my God. And then he takes his loudspeaker out and he's like, I'm going to get you. You know, something like that. And so I was like, OK, I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the only one that was 17. They were 16, so they didn't get anything. I got a summons. Really? Yeah, I got a summons for, it's, it's like, oh. a, I guess, a law in New York State or New York City. It's a public drunkenness, even though we weren't drunk. Dr- we weren't drunk. Mm-hmm. So I had to go to court. Now, this is the problem with that. One, it's already a bad situation, of right? Course. Two, my parents are extremely conservative. You know, my father, my parents, just in whoever's listening, if you don't know, my parents are from India. And at, by this time, my dad was in a religious cult. So he was even more extreme than oh 
a regular conservative Indian father. So he didn't drink. I wasn't allowed to drink. I wasn't really allowed to go out. What I was doing was like the worst. And mm -hmm. and there was a point where I was like, I, I would rather go to jail than go home and face my father with this. <laughs> that's, that's what was going through my mind. I was like, just take me to jail. But uh, no, he gave me the summons and I went home. And uh, and he was just he was kind of just you know, not a, not a great guy, right? Because we were, we were kids, we were being idiots, we didn't hurt anybody. He could have just had us pour out the alcohol and given us a warning. Right. That's what he should have been doing, right? But he didn't. So now I have to deal with this summons. So uh, in high school, I go to a teacher who I happen to know was a lawyer, and I beg him to help me. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know what to do, and I have to go to court. And he and then he was just like, go tell your parents. Hold on. Let's back up here a little bit. Um, I, I just want to dig into your story a little bit. Yeah. Let's go back to uh, the drinking. So walk me through that. You're just walking down the street casually and taking swigs. Like, were you making noise? Were you calling attention to yourself? Uh, no, but it was like it was dark and we were three teenagers passing around, a, a you know, a paper bag. Right. Like with, with alcohol in it, with a so, huge bottle. The cop sees you. Did he turn his lights on? He just like he 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 wrote like he it was in his car. So he wasn't like he wasn't walking. Mm -hmm. So he saw us. Yeah, he turned his lights on and he was like and I was we didn't even realize it was a cop car in the beginning. So, OK, so now he turns his light on. You obviously ran. What did your other uh, couple of friends? They do? just stood there like frozen. Yeah. Nothing else happened. They just like, all right, we're going with you. Yeah, because he was just like, what are you doing? I mean, he screamed out and he was like, what are you guys doing? You know, and, uh, and of course, like we were not up to any good. And <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you started running. How far yeah. did you get before you turned not around? Not far. Not far. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking, like half a block here, a block? Yeah, probably half a block. And he took out like the, what is it called? The phone? The, yeah, the, I don't know, the like. Uh, megaphone, megaphone, microphone, right? <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's bullhorn, bullhorn. I don't, yes, the bullhorn. I don't actually know what he said, but all I heard was, "You better get back here or something. I'll shoot you in the back." You know, like that's what that's oh what my I God. did. I'm sure he didn't say that, but I was like, I thought my life was over. You know, and he got that bullhorn out and he started yeah. screaming. I was like, yeah, "I'm done." It was very dramatic. <laughs> so, okay, hold on. So you come back. What does he do? Is he sitting? Did he sit you guys down on the sidewalk? Like, walk me through that. What's going no, on no, there? We were just standing there he had us pour out the alcohol right. right then he was like he was like what's your name um how old are you right mm -hmm. so we answer um and and then he was like what you're doing is illegal and blah 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 and i'm and then he said he specifically said these two are too young you're gonna get a summons and i was like but i'm going to college um and, and the worst, okay, another bad thing I did, it's just good to know that when it hits the fan, Sonia yeah. does everything wrong. Like, that's, that's what I learned from this incident, because I didn't use my name. I used a fake name. Right. And, right? Okay, and he didn't ask you for your ID? No, we were, we were teenagers. We didn't have ID. Oh, okay. I, I mean, I didn't, I don't, like, I didn't know how to drive, so I didn't have a learner permit or anything like that. Gotcha. I see. I, I had my, I got my learner's permit at 16, hence the confusion. But yeah. anyway. Yeah. That's oh, that's the other thing. I wasn't allowed. I wasn't allowed to take driver's ed because oh. of my parents. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yes. That's unfortunate. Uh, okay. Yeah. So now, so and then, okay, so what did he do? He just let you guys go and you went home? Yeah. He was going to take us home. And I cried and I told him that my father would beat me to a pulp. That's when I was like, I'd rather go to jail <laughs> than show up and like at home to my dad with this cop car because my life would have been over. And right. I cried. I started crying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, please, don't he'll beat me. Like, I kept saying that. <laughs> and I meant it. Like it was I wasn't even saying it dramatically. I meant it one hundred percent. Yeah was like okay fine and he just gave gave me the summons and then okay so it gives you the summons okay and then you will go oh snap i have to show up to court i need a lawyer so you went and found the teacher right the next day the Got very it. next okay. day okay go ahead yeah. pick it up from there and he i had to explain the attack because he was just like just tell your parents it's not a big deal this won't even be on your record you can have it expunged and 
And I was just like, no, you don't understand my father. It, it, that, that's how afraid I was of my dad. Right. It was, it, it was just, it's absolutely true. And then he helped me. So he helped me find a lawyer. It was a friend of his and he said he owed him a favor so he wouldn't charge me. So it was a pro bono case. Right. And the guy has one conversation with me and he said, you using a fake name is worse than the drinking. Wow. Yeah. So he's like, so, we'll, but he's like, we'll go to court and you'll probably have to pay some fine because you're a first time offender and you go to school and you're going to college. You know, he's like, they look at all that stuff. Um, and then he was like, and, and that's it. And then just don't miss your court date. Mm -hmm. Right. So I get a court date. He calls me up. He lets me know. And I'm all ready. I, I even got a friend to come with me because I didn't want to go by myself. Right. But the day, the night before I had to go to court, my mom comes over to me and she's like, by the way, you, we're going to get you inoculated tomorrow. We're going to get your um, vaccines for college because if you go to college, you need to get vaccinated. Right. right. You get your MMR, I think your tetanus, some other stuff. And I was like, oh, you know, I just I knew that. I was just like, why? Why tomorrow? So oh, because she had no idea. She had no idea. They had no idea. Got it. And 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 that and I couldn't miss this court date. Like then I would have been in even more trouble. Right. Right. So I like ran out of my house in the morning. I was like, I'm gonna go. Just you know, I was like, I'm gonna go meet a friend. We're gonna go. I think we said I was. I think we. I said I was gonna go buy something like go shopping for a couple hours for college. I made up some stupid excuse. It was my mom. She's like, e it was easier for me to lie to her than my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so she was like, fine. She's just like, come make sure you're home at this time. Right. And of course, I, I mean, I'm and I'm in a courthouse for the first time in my life. You have to go through those metal detectors. I was freaked out. OK. And I didn't even have fifty dollars. So I had to take singles from like my babysitting money. Uh -huh. And I think I had like thirty eight or thirty nine dollars. And then I took quarters. I took like twelve dollars <laughs> worth of quarters in a little pouch. This is this is it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like carrying this into the court, into the courthouse. And then, you know, the lawyer and I meet and then my phone just starts going nuts. Like it, it just it's just blowing up. And it's my mom. And she's like, where are you? Where are you? And she's calling and I'm not picking up. Right. And then I text her and I was like, so sorry. Uh, there's some issue on the train. Like I was just I couldn't even I was nervous because I was about to go in front of a sure. judge and we had to wait. And then there was a couple cases before ours. Mm -hmm. And like this one kid, he looked like he was 17. He was being brought in in handcuffs. And I was just like, I was terrified. <laughs> I was like, they're going to rescind my college. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then I go up and the lawyer kind of presents my case. And I, and I just keep my mouth shut. And the judge is like, what's your name? And I tell him. And then he's like, listen, I never want to see you in this courtroom again. Right. And he was really nice because the lawyer was like, she's been a good student. She's, you know, a, a, an A student. She's never gotten in trouble before. She's going to college. So he took pity on me and he realized that well, he realized what I think the police officer sh should have realized, that it, it was just kids being stupid and not mm -hmm. hurting anybody. And right. He wasn't even drunk at that so, point. So you said that you had given them a, a fake name. Yes. Did you know the person whose name you used? Yes. And I told her. <laughs> May I ask, like, obviously not the name, but who the person was? Yeah, she was a friend of mine. She was a good friend of mine. And I told her, I was like, I just couldn't have my him come to my parents' house. Like, I just was that scared. And she was like, it's fine, you know, because the, the, the lawyer's like, it's not a big deal because you didn't give the same address. But he was like, just in case, because you gave the name just so it doesn't come back to your friend, yeah. we should fix, we need to fix this. And oh. my, the teacher actually told me, he's like, next time just use a completely fake name. Like don't mm. use somebody's identity. And I was like, I know, I'm, I'm clearly not a good liar under pressure. <laughs> like, nothing, nothing's going right. Right. 
And this is probably up until now, like I've never gotten into this much trouble, you know, yeah. and, and this is not even real trouble. Like it's when you when looking back on it as an adult. But anyway, so my phone's going off and then finally I didn't even have to pay the fee. Uh, and I left and I came home. And by the time I came home, my mom was furious and my dad actually he took off work to get home early so we could go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And so my, I, I just, I, I just got like, I got it that night from my father, you know, and I just was like, and I knew it and I knew it and I was, it was fine. It was fine. He, Do you think you got into less trouble than you would have if the cop had brought you home? Yes. So it, it, it sounds like you really came ahead. My life would have been over. Okay. So you, you really came out ahead, no matter how mad he was that night, you came out ahead anyway. At this point, yes. Okay. At this point, the story's not done yet. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> um, but at this point, I get in trouble, and, you know, I don't, like, we're Indians, so they don't ground me. They, he just, like, yelled at me. I think he hit me. And that's okay. I mean, like, it, it wasn't crazy, you know. I didn't get, like, punched in the head or anything like that. Yeah. It was just regular disciplining if you live in a... Mm -hmm. ethnic household i would yeah, say <laughs> you know? just like, i understand <laughs> it was getting your getting your ass whooped um and then then i the doctor actually like lied and said i got it he signed the paper because he was a friend of my dad of course we we like i only went to an indian doctor who was a friend of my father's mm -hmm. um and so I couldn't even, I couldn't say anything. And so I go to college and I have this fake vaccination mm -hmm. um, paperwork and I actually never got the vaccines. Right. Super legal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think that was probably the worst thing. That's probably the most <laughs> illegal thing you can do is forge a, a, a well, he, he didn't forge it, but lie. Right. So, the doctor lying. Let, let, me, let me just recap for everyone who's listening along at home. <laughs> she started out with stealing alcohol from her parents, oh, God. then escalated to evading the police, to then escalate to uh, identity fraud. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, we, we have uh, uh, just False medical document. like malfeasance, malpractice, I don't know what you call this, but some other kind of fraud. Yeah. So by my count, you should have been in jail for like seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> I'm really happy you were not the cop then. <laughs> yeah, it was like, honestly, it could have been much better. I don't know. I don't know if it could have been better any other way. But that's all I knew at that time. And, you know, the fear of my father is what drove me to make every horrible decision that I made. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the lesson from that is don't be horrible to your children. You know, be good to your kids, because if you're bad to your kids, they're going to jail and it's going to be your fault. <laughs> and uh, so then I'm, I'm in school and that's fine. And, and, you know, the whole thing is gone. I don't even think about it. And then sophomore year, a breakout of whooping cough is on campus. Like we have a, a on campus, there was a breakout of whooping cough. And mm -hmm. guess who got whooping cough? Who? Me! <laughs> I got it. I got whooping cough, and it was a horrible experience. You cough so hard that your body shakes. Yeah. And, like, you feel this pain in your lungs, and you're like, you, I, I was like, my lungs don't have feeling, but they, <laughs> they did. I couldn't sleep. I had to, like, sleep. I had to put my leg up so that I wouldn't hurt like I don't know I, I can't even explain it but it it was so bad and I had to they put me on uh, Tylenol with codeine mm -hmm. and the Tylenol was so intense or the the dosage that I had pain in my kidneys oh my god yeah and a good friend of mine at that point in college who did a lot of drugs told me he said well that's what happens to drug addicts they can't process the drugs and and he was like you're going through what a drug addict goes through but without the high you know and I was like, <laughs> you know i'm dying i'm yeah. dying i'm coughing and so that's what happened winter break i spent three weeks just in bed and you know paying for the fact that i didn't get vaccinated and those things are real like mm -hmm. what it what it really made me learn is you need to get vaccinated there's a reason why like whenever i hear these anti-vaxxers yeah it, it drives me nuts i was like 
you should all get whooping cough for three weeks over a college break because then you'd understand how important it is to get vaccinated. Right. So I did pay for it in, in one way. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's phenomenal. Um, <laughs> I'm in awe that you got away with it, <laughs> if I'm being quite frank with you. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how. I don't know how that. That was the universe. The universe so, was like, "I'm gonna take care of you now, and then you're gonna pay for it two years from now." <laughs> so, so let me ask you a question: um, Are you at all concerned that your uh, parents might be a fan of this podcast and now hear this admission? They don't know I do stand-up comedy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's fine. Plot thickens. Let, let me tell you something. I, I don't know if this is a first generation uh, immigrant thing, but for the first couple of years that I did comedy, my parents didn't know either. Um, it was like uh, one day I had to sit them down and be like, hey, mom, dad, I have an announcement to make. <laughs> <laughs> were, they, were, they like, were they like, uh, we wish you were gay? Is that what they said? Is that the response? <laughs> no. <laughs> they, they were confused. They're like, what, what do you mean? I was like, I, I, I tell jokes. They're, they're like, I, what, like, what, you're, you? I was like, yeah. They're like, but don't you have to be funny to do that? I was like, yes. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> you're kind of missing the point here. <laughs> they're like, where, where do you tell jokes? I, was like, I, I don't know. It's bars. So yeah. you're at bar. Yeah, yes. I mean, you're missing the whole point here. So that was that conversation. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, if I were to tell anyone in my house, I think they'd be like, like a clown you know yeah. is that what you do and i'm just like it's hard to understand my parents don't don't they're not on social media and they are they don't really watch any content that's english you know they sure. watch all like the indian bollywood movies and right. serials and all that stuff so i'm not too worried about it <laughs> but i i just like i i felt like i lost uh, a whole winter break and yeah. It was, it was lesson learned. Let's put it that way, lesson learned. Well, I guess the point I'm trying to make is this. What would happen if your parents found out about this incident today? Um, I mean, at this point it's, I don't know. Um, I think my father, I think my father would be like, see, this is why you shouldn't hang out with Americans. They're horrible. <laughs> like, I think he would say something like that. Like mm -hmm. this is that you you've you've corrupted your um, I don't know reputation or something like that mm -hmm. and and then he'd probably worry that I would have some like legal implicate like there would be legal implications or something like that right. he'd be scared um, of the law I, and I think in general immigrants are scared of the law just because they don't sure. know it and that's why they're so easily taken advantage of to be <laughs> honest it's true it's not every immigrant but a lot of a lot of immigrants get taken advantage of sure sure so let's go ahead and uh jump right back into this okay. uh go ahead and uh retell your story you can change any facts or detail you want let's say i got pulled over uh for the alcohol i think what i would have done different there is one i would not have run away I would mm -hmm. have stayed still. Mm -hmm. And two, I would have still lied. I still would have cried. I still would have said, my dad's going to beat me. But I would have used a completely fake name. Right. If I could do this all over again. And that way, I wouldn't have to deal with the summons. I would have gotten my vaccinations. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten, a, like, a, my ass beat from my dad that day for that thing. And, and then, you know... Cut to two years later, I wouldn't have missed my winter break. And, you know, in those three weeks, I could have, like, I could have invented Twitter. You know, <laughs> I had stuff that I wanted to say that was horrible. I would think it all the time. And I'm like, wouldn't it be great if you could just type this up, you know, in 140 <laughs> characters? That's what I would have done is I would have created Twitter. Right. And I would have beat Jack Dorsey to it if it wasn't <laughs> for this whooping cough. I'm telling you. OK, it would be like and it would be amazing. Think about it. If I created Twitter, mm -hmm. then our president would not have I, I would I would never let him get away with everything that he's gotten away with. And to be honest, his Twitter is what's helped his presidency more than anything else. 
because mm-hmm. it's been his platform. Sure. And so if I created Twitter, he wouldn't have that. He probably wouldn't have even become president because he would have been um, censored on, on Twitter. And even if he did, he'd be censored. And all the stuff that he says that's lies, it would just be like, this is a lie. Don't believe this fake <laughs> news. Or it would just never see the light of day. And if that were the case, then we probably would have a different president. But even if he was president, we probably wouldn't have things like this rise in white nationalism, the Proud Boys. You know, we wouldn't have 300,000 people dying of a pandemic because there would be some semblance of normality happening. And and it would be like it's like, you know, when you go back in time, like um, what's that movie? Back to the Future. Yeah. Two? where he goes back in time so Biff can't become president. Yeah. That's what it would be like, okay? Because I would have created Twitter. Sure. And, <laughs> and I mean, not to, not to exaggerate or anything, but I would have saved the world, okay? That's what would have happened oh if, if this story went the way, if I could redo it the way it needed to be done. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's, so, okay, so what I'm learning from this is that uh, we would have taken Jack Dorsey's uh, brainchild. Got it. Okay. I think I'm capable of it. You know, I, I believe I you are too. Dumb stuff to write on on the internet, and then I, but I just didn't have the vehicle to do it. Yeah. No. Look, I'm not arguing with you. I'm not saying that you are not. I'm sure you're more than capable of doing it. That okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this um you lie better than i do <laughs> i don't know that i've ever told you a lie um mm-hmm. <laughs> so let me ask you this um walk me through a scenario where uh your mom would have found out but not your dad how would that have gone down you know i'm not sure I think she would have told my father because I don't think she really ever hid anything from him. And also my mom worked a lot. So I didn't, growing up, I actually didn't see my mom often. Okay. And did you, when you spoke to the lawyer, how how long did he take you that the case was going to last? He said it would be quick because it was a small infraction. He just said he didn't know when we would be called, I guess there's a docket and Mm -hmm, right. So he just said that you have to keep the afternoon free. And so I was just hoping, because I left in the morning and I was just hoping that it would be good. It it would just, you know, happen fast so I could run home and still make the doctor's appointment, but it didn't. So that's not the way court works. Apparently it's not very efficient guys. If you've never (laughs) been in court, I could tell you something. It's not efficient and it doesn't feel very safe. (laughs) <laughs> Listen to you. You've been court one time, and you're and you're like, let me tell you, yeah, I've exactly. seen some things. <laughs> oh gosh, that's wild. Okay, so did you? And you weren't at any point in handcuffs. No, no. I think if I was in handcuffs, I would have just. I, I would have lost it. I mean, it's interesting because, uh, you know, and I and I don't mean to get serious uh, because this is a, a light, a light podcast. At least I, I think it is. Right. It's, yeah. It's some, sometimes. It. But yeah, it, it, without going into detail, I have and I had and still have a very tumultuous relationship with my father. Sure. And he was in a religious cult. So. When you grow up in a cult, it's like, it's sort of like all or nothing. Mm-hmm. You do, it's their way or the highway. It's true. It's like my way or the highway is the way the, the mindset is. And if I didn't conform to everything that he wanted me to be, I got in trouble. Mm-hmm. You know, so my hair had to be worn a certain way. I had to smile. If I wasn't smiling at times, uh, he would get annoyed. Uh, all my clothing had to be approved by my dad. So it was very, it was like living in an, I don't know, in a, in a fascist home or something like that, like a microcosm of it. Um, and I was just always afraid of getting caught, but at the same time, I still did stupid stuff. Right. right? 
Like I, and I think that's what's weird is when you live in that kind of environment that's so oppressive, you think, oh, you know, people would just fall in line. Mm -hmm. And you do. You fall in line on the surface because you have to. Right. But I actually think it's worse. Yeah. Because you're likely to do things that are. You're still. A, I'm. I was still a teenager. I still rebelled. I still. You know. I went. I, I went out. I stole alcohol from their. <laughs> right. And they didn't notice. <laughs> from their liquor cabinet, and, and, so it doesn't stop you from, I think, doing the dumb things you might do as sure. a teenager, as a kid, but you just pay for it in such an extreme way. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you learn that that's just the way it is. So I used to know in advance, like I'd be, I'd do something and I would know in that moment that I would get in trouble for it, mm -hmm. but I still did it. Right. Because at that point, you're just like, I'm going to get in trouble one way or another. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I could get in trouble for wearing my hair down. So what's I rather do this. I'd rather go, you know, biking with my friends or something like that and yeah. or go on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> with, <laughs> I don't know. It's just um, and I think that it's worse because when you get in trouble as a kid or a teenager, I think you should be able to turn to your parents. Mm -hmm. And when you can't, when that's not available to you, I think the consequences are much worse. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I'm, I was really lucky that I had a teacher who happened to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. and I was really lucky that he was willing to help me, and that I didn't have to pay for it. Because even what if that guy said, "Yeah, I'll do it, but you have to pay me five hundred bucks." Yeah. I, I couldn't afford that. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. Like uh, your teacher was owed a favor. And he graciously cashed in his chip for you. He did. And he I will never to. forget that. Yeah. I won't, I won't say his name, but like, I will never forget him. And it was one of the kindest things anyone's ever done for me. Sure. Um, and I did tell him my story. And I think, I think he understood, you know, mm -hmm. he understood that there are certain families that where, you know, parents are just not willing to understand. Maybe it was because he's been a teacher for so many years. Right. And, and he was also a good guy, right? He's a good guy, so. That's something, you know, it's, it's interesting. One of the parts of your stories that really resonated with me was uh, when you mentioned uh, being in the courthouse and your phone going off and, like, you know, you have to lie to your parents. So you say, oh, you know, I'm having train problems. Because growing up in New York, I can't tell you how many times I, like, after high school was over, instead I was, like, the way it worked for me is I was supposed to go to my grandmother's house and meet my parents and then my, my mom would drive me home. Like I would take the subway to my parents and my grandmother's every single day. Right. That was right. the plan. Right. The amount of times that, you know, after school, I was like fully, I went to an all boys school, but you know, sometimes, you know, girls would come over to the school after school. We'd, mm -hmm. you know, like, I don't know, go like do innocent high school things. I, I just want to clarify. Cause you know, you're in high school, like <laughs> when doing Amazon, anything to that. If you're listening, Juan Carlos did nothing. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Nothing bad. No, no, but I really mean that, like, innocent stuff, like, you know, like kisses and stuff like that, hugs, holding hands, that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Under the stairwells <laughs> and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, my mom's blowing up my phone and I'd be like, oh, and then I like, wouldn't answer because, you know, you don't want to tell her what you're doing. Yeah. And then you hop on the subway and then you get home and she's like, what happened to you? Why are you 40 minutes late? I'm like, uh, uh, the subway was running late. You know, I don't yeah, get service down the there. Same. <laughs> it's always the same excuse. And, I you know, they, they kind of, they believe you, but they don't believe you yeah. in denial. I think it's, it's um, worse for kids nowadays with all the Wi-Fi and the subway station. Now you get service it, down there. And also a parent can literally look at it and be like, there was no train delay. Yeah. You know, the train came at 752. Why weren't you on the choice? So I feel yeah. bad for kids today. They can't really get away with it, no, like, they can't. anything. So, uh, as we're uh, wrapping up the story, because uh, we're, uh, we're starting to uh, run out of time here. We have a tradition on this podcast where uh, before we uh, let our guests go, we like to ask them to share a quick uh, childhood story that uh, puts a smile on their face or, uh, you know, just generally uh, makes them feel good. Uh, do you have a quick story that you can share with us? <laughs> <laughs> a quick childhood story that went, went, went well. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I um 
for my birthdays, I think I remember my birthdays very fondly because it was one of the very few days where I didn't get in trouble a lot. Okay. You know, it was one of the days where I had some freedom and I used to always have parties as a kid, meaning just with kids. Right. Um, and I just remember those days being fun and my mom would always like make my favorite food and mm -hmm. I, we'd play and it was just this, it's a, it's a fond memory. Like I, I will say that. And cause I, I don't, I don't particularly, I'm sure people have had, you know, worse childhoods. Absolutely. But I, I don't mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, like, I don't have too many great stories from my kid in my childhood. No, that's perfectly okay. Um, what was your favorite food? Um, it's, it's actually an Indian food. Let's hear it. Oh. It's called bao bhaji. Okay. And it's basically like a vegetarian's version of Sloppy Joe's. Ooh. It's made with beans and um, vegetables. Uh, and it's sort of like a stew. Mm -hmm. And then you take um, buns of bread mm -hmm. and you sort of like lightly, what do you call, grill them. And then you put that stuff on and they put lemon and onion and yeah. uh, coriander and it's delicious that i mean that sounds delicious i uh i'm gonna try to try it i when i was in college so just a little something about me i'm a pescatarian mm -hmm. so i don't okay. eat meat um when i was in college uh i'm very thankful that there was a large uh south asian population on campus and we had it's uh, like an indian style restaurant I don't want to call it Indian food because that would do a disservice to the Indian culture, but <laughs> <laughs> it was intended to be Indian food. And uh, sometimes there were no meatless options on campus. So I spent a lot of time eating, you know, food at this place that intended to make Indian food. So I developed uh, a, an appreciation and a palate for Indian food. That's why I asked so, because I'm always looking for new things to try because if it was not for uh, Indian culture and Indian food, I would have starved in college. So when did you become a pescatarian? At what age? I was 16. Okay. okay. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it was, it's been a long time. Um, I've been vegetarian my whole life. So, yeah, so you can, I, can I was going to say you can relate, but I realized that we are not in the same boat. You are, you know. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it, I can relate because it's, it's, especially when you leave your your home it's really yeah. hard to find nowadays i think it's very different yeah it's easy um but back when you were 16 i don't even think people knew the term pescatarian right <laughs> They'd be like what, what that's not vegetarian you know that's the only <laughs> one and even being vegetarian was weird yeah um, people, people you, look you find on school trips that you always had to eat like horrible steamed pasta with steamed vegetables that was yep. the only option available yep and it was disgusting like yeah. you had to put salt and pepper on it just to make it taste. I couldn't eat PB and, PB and J's anymore after a while. I was like, I've had way too many peanut butter and jellies. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it was fun. So we have uh, one last tradition on the show before I let you go. Okay. We like to highlight a charity or an organization at the end of every episode. Do you have a charity or an organization for us? I do. Uh, I... I give to this organization, it's called City Harvest. And basically what they do is they're based in New York City and they take food that was not eaten or sold by restaurants who participate and they redistribute it to food shelters. And uh, especially now, I think they're, they're really doing great work, you know, especially now when people aren't, it's much harder to, to live. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I think they're Perfect. wonderful. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, not, you know, I'm all for anyone who helps uh, feed our city. Um, before I let you go, do you have any uh, last words for our revisionaries? Yeah, I could have, I could have, I could have come up with Twitter. Just so you guys. Know. <laughs> That's just truth. <laughs> That's not, that's not a joke. <laughs> I believe you. Uh, speaking of no, Twitter. It was, great. it was great to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I really enjoyed even the exercise because I had to think of a, a story and it, it was actually, it's actually a fun story to tell now that it's so far behind me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No, of course not. Now that it's not your presence. So uh, speaking of Twitter, uh, where can we follow you? Yes. So uh, on Twitter, I'm at Sonia Vi, and on Instagram, I'm at Sonia Vi Comedy. 
And please follow me and I'll tell you more scintillating stories about what I was young. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, thank you so much, Sonia. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. The Revisionary Podcast. So I appreciate her coming on the podcast. And uh, I honestly, this is the first time I've actually felt bad about asking um, the questions about the childhood. I I guess it had never really occurred to me that, you know, that that's probably not something I should ask everyone. But um, I do appreciate her story. I, I think I'm glad that her uh, teacher was willing to catch in. Uh, was it, what's the phrase? Uh, cash in his chit to help her out. I think that was really nice of her. But um, more than anything, I'm I'm just kind of glad that this all worked out. And I want to say thank you again to all of you for uh, supporting us and for, you know, your continued loyalty to this podcast. So I guess without further ado, I'm always going to say it. Thank you for listening. This is the-